And online now, a man who I know hasn't killed anyone, um, but he pisses people off a bit sometimes um, and also has quite a great following at the same time. Uh, good morning, Shane Jones. Hey, kia ora, morning folks, 2023. <laughs> it sort of just came around real fast, didn't it? Well, I was worried initially that there was going to be a seamless transition from 22, 23, but uh, over the last week or so, that circuit break has well and truly been on display. <laughs> Did you find it a surprise that the Prime Minister just sort of up and went, yeah, nah, I'm done? Yeah, I, I thought that she might show more respect and more commitment. After all, if it wasn't for the Labour Party, she would never have risen politically and she'd never have been the Prime Minister. Well, actually, it's due to your party that she rose. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're all overlooking the fact 400,000 of you national voters <laughs> turned out and decided to install Jacinda without a handbrake. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yep. And I think that it's really interesting, looking back on the analysis of that, some of them went left and some of them went right. Oh, it was a, a, a very strange time. Like people were saying that they were national supporters, but they were voting Green and then they voted Act they were, rather than just sticking to the main line. And, and, and that's what happened, basically. <laughs> it's uh, well, it's the randomness of politics. However, she's now uh, yesterday's news and mm. we have the redhead. Yep. You can have either. Chris you can't be colorist. From come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, you can have Chris from Auckland, or you can have Chris from Wellington. If you said he was a brown ass, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we have we have Chippy, and we're not allowed to call Jacinda nicknames, but we're allowed to call Chippy Chippy, um, which aye, I was like is quite funny. But he's he's so. The really interesting thing, I, I think, is people are saying, oh, look, Jacinda left because uh, she found it um, too hot because of the social media stuff and all that sort of bollocks. Um, when in reality, I think Chippy has paid her the worst of um, backhanders in a lot of ways by saying, oh, everything she's done's crap because I'm going to change it all. Um, is that the way you perceive it? Oh, look, everything that uh, Jacinda touched since 2020 has not resulted in delivery. Exactly. Initially, she had the love of the people and respect of um, locking down the nation, uh, but uh, very quickly that hand was overdone. Uh, people have presented that their liberties and their rights seemingly found their way into the hands of, a, of an arbitrary politician, and she would never have recovered from that. But more importantly, uh, she lost control of her own team. She was unable to control Nanaia Mahuta, who has yeah. proven to be one of New Zealand's most divisive politicians that God ever put breath into. <laughs> what was initially an attempt to fix up drinking water has turned into a highly divisive and polarising social experiment. Got nothing to do with poo pipes and infrastructure now. It's got everything to do as to whether or not um, tribes should have a superior right. Of it is government. a superior right. I'm glad you've acknowledged that because it's about bloody time Māori actually said that that's exactly what it is. They don't want an equal right, equal right. They're looking for a superior right. Tamana yeah. Oti Wai. Well, Nanaya, Nanaya and her three water uh, imbroglio, she delivered a superior right. Yes. And primarily it's gone to Tainui and uh, probably to Naitahu. Yep. And in the event I have the opportunity to serve in Parliament again, uh, the first thing that uh, I would have us do is uh, put some legislation in the House which freezes the entire process. There is no more three waters. And then address the issue in such a way we address the uh, rights of the actual owners. And we. Uh, and you're talking about the owners up. as is the councils and the, and the, the public? Rate the ratepayers, the ratepayers. Yep. Yeah. And we went, uh, I'd never tolerate any superior right being accorded to hapu and iwi. We already have an electoral system. In fact, many councils have elected Māori members. They've gone through the jungle gym of electoral process. Why should they play second fiddle to a runanga or a hapu? Mm. I don't agree with it. A thousand million years will ever pass before I change my mind. Yeah. How does that stand you in your own electorate who are probably driven by iwi and hapu politics up there in Ngāpui land more than any probably tribes that I know? 
Well, I think people will find um, a bit off-putting uh, the way I express it, but then many people who are just getting on with their lives and don't bother uh, espousing or spouting off uh, political views of any sort uh, quietly agree with me. Mm. I mean, there's a contest of ideas. Yeah. The marae or the courtyard is about um, ideas being bounced around. And uh, my ideas... I'd have to say, I, 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 struck, I struck something pretty similar. Like, you know, Naito is going hard out ass down that path of water at the moment. And, um, you know, I've declared an interest. I do some work for them occasionally. The, but the, um, the thing that I, I was quite surprised at Christmas, and you'd been probably like us, we had lots of people in and out, having lots of court at all, was that um, they were saying that they felt that it had gone too far. Like, Māori were saying that. Um, and they were getting embarrassed by it because it didn't feel right. Were you getting the same feeling out there? Yeah, no, no, without a doubt. Yeah. But I think that, uh, I think what happened with Jacinda's leadership is she uncorked the bottle and she's let a whole lot of political genies uh, out, of the, uh, out into the mist. And uh, those genies are going to be slayed and the bottle's going to be smashed. We are not going to tolerate a three waters co-governance um, metastasization. It's just not going to happen. Mm. So what are you going to go and chase? If you were, if you were chippy right at the moment, what would you do? Uh, I think partly what he said... Would you hold a snap election? He needs to go back to uh, basics. They won't hold a snap election. <laughs> Turkeys don't. Uh, no, they don't. don't. Christmas. <laughs> it was a good column by Richard Preble, though. Mm. But yeah, so what would you do if you were in the prime minister's seat right at the moment? What are the things that you would change? Well, I'd certainly suspend um, three waters, dead in the water. It won't yep. be three waters; it'll be dead in the water. That's the first thing. Radio Second New Zealand, thing. TVNZ merger. It, it, uh, that would be aborted. Uh, income Before, insurance? You know, uh, that, 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 that is a tax that the country cannot afford. Yep. And it is a disincentive to work. One thing that I find particularly uh, nauseating is that uh, this notion that we have to wait for simple uh, basic workers to come from overseas. We've got far oh, too many yeah. deaths who are working yep. uh, at getting money for free and doing nothing. Mm. Uh, I, I'm a great supporter of the notion that uh, the dole should not be a lifelong entitlement. There okay. is a period of time uh, where you should have a quota, where you're entitled to use it, uh, but you have to go and work. This notion that people who are able-bodied but who enjoy the lifestyle of free money, then either you work or you don't get taxpayers' money. Mm. And I would have to say, I'm probably I'm even stronger than you. I want to go back to the old days of the work schemes. When when you see the level of work out there that requires just basic manual labour um, and getting people off the couch, as um, I think one of your um, mates said once, um, it, yeah, it, it, at, the, at the end of the day, we've got to get the nefs off the couch um, and there is work out there to be done. So it is time. It is definitely time to go back and revisit those hard-ass programmes again. Indeed, absolutely. It's all of that's and going to happen if Winston and I have our way. Yeah. Now, Shane, uh, in terms of the party, I, I noticed that you had a little bit of an uptick in the last um, poll that I've seen. There's probably been a few. and uh, So the party itself, it's, it's sort of coming from behind. Um, so what are the big planks for you guys uh, coming into this election? Well, we have spent the last two years uh, re-strengthening the party, addressing internal processes, boosting membership, raising money, and without a doubt, we will be back over 5%. I think it's important, though, that as we release our policies, which we will do, and share the narrative, that it's relevant to what actually is bothering people. It yeah. doesn't degenerate into something that... Um, I might think is of particular interest because of the various hobbies I might have or uh, old industry associations. So it's really important that New Zealand First resonate and reflect the priorities of people who are willing to um, trade their vote away from one horse to another. And, and do you still uh, see yourselves as the kingmakers and the moderators on the major parties? Well, 
I, I don't want to. I don't want to sound um, pompous, but uh, people should bear in mind after Labour were free to operate without New Zealand first, things rapidly turned to custard. There would never have been any te pua pua. There would never have been a uh, hate speech. Uh, mm, that's process. another one that's on the chopping board. Any, there would never have been any of those dalliances. They would have been stopped before they even made it into the corridor of a cabinet. Uh, yeah. Hey, and someone's just asked a question too. So uh, what are you actually doing for a job these days? No, I'm back up on Tai Tokyo. Yeah. And my uh, lad is a, uh, a builder. And amongst other things, uh, previously I used to do property development. So no, no, I'm looking after myself. Ah. So you've got lots of free time being granddad. <laughs> there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with uh, maintaining strong whānau connections. <laughs> no, there is not. That is quite fulfilling, really, isn't it? <laughs> Mm, How many grandkids have you got? Uh, I dot tabulated the number the other day. I think it's 13 or 14 wow. or maybe 15. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hey, they're all they're all kicking alive and uh, all their parents are actively engaged and uh, paving their way and paying their way and uh, mm. none of them have disappeared to... Uh, oh, one's in Australia, but the rest are here in uh, God's own. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I think that's a really interesting question, just what you were doing for a job. Um, someone suggested that if, if, if you're not doing anything, are you part of that problem of the quiet quitting, um, which means that people of our generation are sort of out of the workforce when they probably could be quite useful in a workforce. Ah, uh, okay. No, 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 no. I, uh, I, I come from a school of thought, if you're any good before you went into politics, you'll be right when you come out. But if you're useless <laughs> before you went in, you never get any better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Hey, look, Shane, thanks mm. very much. It was just uh, our, and the one final question um, uh, sure. is the the right. We've seen the rise and rise of the Maori caucus within Labour. They've lost their biggest cheerleader with Jacinda, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's clear that Hipkins is looking to change the direction of a lot of policy, which has been set by that Maori caucus. Mm. Are we likely to see them get really antsy over the next few months or do you think that um, Hipkins is going to manage them? And what will they get for being managed? Yeah, well, the first thing is that uh, the Māori members of the New Zealand Labour Party caucus have no status and have no platform without their party. And uh, any uh, notion that there are threats to walk across the house or go and set up their own party... Uh, what uh, the leader of the Labour Party should do is open the door and chase them out. Hmm. Because the policies and the very toxic approach that has been taken on matters pertaining to the Treaty and Three Waters shows that they have misread the uh, trajectory that the nation wants to put itself upon. And they're really missing in areas where they ought to focus, where Māori already have genuine rights that are in play for mm. example in forestry and land and fisheries i mean where are they and what are they doing to stop russell norman and his current campaign to intimidate all the Maori fishing all of the what sorry i just missed that last bit yeah uh, russell norman from greenpeace yeah uh, that disgraced organization that is responsible for policies designed to destroy our economy they are currently um, sending letters and lobbying all of the iwis who own fisheries to the fishing industry to protect seamounts. Well, where are the Māori voices in New mm. Zealand Parliament challenging that type of perfidy? Zero. That's their property right. Yeah, that's a very good point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so those are the yeah, things so that they legitimately than, own. Yeah, I mean, rather than uh, giving us another day off of Matariki and all that sort of... Uh, Jazz. I just think we've got to get back to those issues that cause people to have more money in their pocket, develop the economy and uh, result in people gaining skills and commitment to pay their own way.
That's a really interesting point. Hmm. Have a ponder on that one. Hey, look, Shane, thanks very much for your time. Um, and, okay. uh, and no doubt we'll talk again in the course of this year um, around is issues iwi and issues political. And no doubt you'll be like me. It'll be a daily practice just to check what's happened next, really, because <laughs> you just never know when you wake up what the day will bring. Thank you, Pai. Thank you, Pai. I look forward to uh, more contact with you guys. Take care. Kia ora. Thanks, Shane.